Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my cold, windy garden. Believe it or not, it's still a frosty wind here. I'm longing for those days where you step out of the house and it feels nice and warm and summery, while well, springy would already be a first step forward. Let's see whenever that is gonna happen, because honestly, I just stepped out of the house and I thought, Oh, I can vaguely remember those times when you walk out and you feel like, ooh, it's warmer outside, it's warmer outside than inside. That is not a thing, but nothing is going to stop me because I really want to get out here and do a little lovely Sunday video together with you. I want to plant a little bit. I want to mainly transplant from all different areas of the garden. So what I want to do is just walk you through those areas that I want to tackle because I want to prepare a little bit in the island bed for some new perennials that will go in there but in order for that I need to make some space which is ideal because I also want to um, plant a little bit in the herbaceous border which means I can take some of those plants oh here comes the wind from the island bed and put them um, into the new herbaceous border and then next to the house on the south facing wall there is something that is nice but it's a little too much there and I think I'm gonna take some of those out as well but what I want to do first flip the phone and quickly show you those things that I want to do today with you first I want to start here in the island bad and I think you can tell all these pink blobs those are those pink hyacinth that we planted together I think they're really nice and I love that I planted those in drifts but I want to start working here in this area and this is north facing and there is a cherry tree uh, providing quite some shade throughout the season which means that um, the plants that are growing here might not be ideal at least one is not ideal there are two different varieties of asters you can tell by the difference in leaves that they are different asters so in the front row there is a shorter variety and it hardly ever comes to flower and I really think it has to do with a lack of light so I'm going to lift it entirely and that will go to a complete different area of the garden and then behind it there is aster aster and this is kind of like my secret weapon of the garden I'm going to talk you through a little bit in a moment but um, I need to get in there with a spade and just reduce it by size a little bit because it really doesn't know its boundary sometimes but still I love it and I wouldn't miss it that is going to go into parts of the new herbaceous border as well and then in the front I want to prepare the soil a little bit because I want to plant some turtle hat pink ones that I already have in the border back there so I think in autumn at one point in September when they come to flower is really beautiful because then you have this moment of cohesion standing here and this is what I always enjoy and Alfie enjoys munging on Calamagrostis grass this is the one thing that I just figured but at least it, it's not bad for her apparently so well bon appetit Alfie the south facing wall of the front garden really starts coming to love and this really has to do with this area being so protected sheltered and sun filled so what we have is the first alliums are coming so all these like really lovely lush green leaves that you see my agastache also comes back this is the only area of the garden where agastache really comes back other areas i tried it but it was too cold apparently fritillaria persica this is ivory belts also just about starting to flower one of my favorite in the back there i'm going to go a little closer there is my big clump of euphorbia this is an evergreen euphorbia and what i love about them so much is the color of their flowers they kind of start opening in this chartreuse kind of like sulfur yellow tone which i really enjoy i think there's just a wonderful color contrast with these beautiful leaves that they produce and then also mixed in between all the alliums here but what I want to do and show you is actually growing here in this little stone path that leads all the way around the house you can see these like rosettes of green foliage and this is verbascum this is a variety that flowers kind of like in a mm, vanilla yellow maybe it's not really yellow yellow it's like very creamy white yellow beautiful tall starring stems i'm going to keep some of them here but not all of those they self-seed like crazy it's hard to control sometimes beautiful to touch the leaves by the way they're kind of like very fluffy almost like silky soft really beautiful gonna lift some of those and then they will go to a completely different area of the garden before we start with the planting i just quickly want to show you this lovely combination of those white hyacinth and i think i said before this is exactly what i love in hyacinth when the flower heads are not filled and filled with flowers they are a little more dainty and delicate really enjoy these and then in the back there you can tell this is one of those drifts of those purple um, spring iris that we planted together they're completely different to what I actually ordered they come to flower quite late but still I enjoy them I think they're beautiful really lovely color and I think that they're a really nice combination here with those white hyacinth and with the white dog at the back as well obviously 
All right, before I start any kind of planting with you in the garden, the first thing I'm gonna do is quickly run back inside and change because I'm not dressed properly enough. I really need to get into my proper winter clothing now because the wind is so frosty. I'm gonna make myself a tea first, change, and then we finally go out here and do some planting. All right, that's better. Wearing long johns, my thickest winter sweater, scarf, everything. I'm prepared for the Arctic, Baltic, spring again. So let's go. If you're growing asters in your garden as well, and they really need to have a little bit of a size control, there's one easy one how to do it, and this is what I'm gonna do. I come in with a spade. So what I do is I make up my mind what size the drift in this border is supposed to be. I think I haven't been in this border for at least four years, so the asters were just growing wildly wherever they wanted to, but now is a good time to really do some size control here. Very simple, you really get in there with your spade, just all the way along the border where you want to have your drift, make a clean cut and then the nice thing about asters is their growing habit. So they have runners, they grow quite shallow underneath the soil surface and then they also have quite shallow roots. So the easiest thing to do is come in with your garden fork, really loften up the soil a little bit. I even have a smaller one for the hand, maybe this is what I'm gonna use. And then I can just take out every single runner and see which ones are still looking nice, good, have a good root system. Then I can take those from the aster variety Astram and take them over to my new herbaceous border where I wanna have a nice big drift and the other asters, unknown variety, they will go down into the no man's land area because there I would like to create this natural meadowy wild feel. Even if there are stinging nettles or some weeds growing in between the area, I don't mind, but I think you can still make it look nicer. And if these asters will thrive there, why not? Let's give it a try. Better there than putting them straight under the compost heap. have a wheelbarrow full of really exciting things. The first one is Aster Astran. This is the one that I'm gonna use in the new herbaceous border. And just to show you how the growing habit is, you can tell quite well, I think. Here, this is an old stem, the brown woody part. So this is where it was flowering last year. And from the same location, it sends three, four new shoots, but then it has this very long runner. So all of this here, is coming from one old plum, so it's a very long runner, and after like 40 centimeters, it really starts to spring up with a lot and a lot of new fresh stems, which is beautiful. What I can do is I can cut this off here and also remove all of this part if I don't want it. This is up to me now. But the lovely thing is it might look a little invasive, it can be a little invasive, but they're so easy to pull, and now it's very beneficial for me because I have so many plants for free. I'll have a massive huge drift in the new herbaceous border. Next are the verbascum, so you can tell quite well on this plant here how the roots look. So they build like a long tap root, kind of like dandelions in a way. And then they have this rosette of green leaves. So they need to go into the ground first because they have so much surface area with all those leaves that they start to wilt very fast. And then the last thing are these asters here of unknown variety. They grow probably like 30 centimeters in height. They will go down to the slope as well. So first thing I'm gonna do is take you with me down to the slope and start planting these asters and the verbascum. I'm taking you with me to no man's land again. So this is a little stripe in between the farmland where Alfie kind of like dawdles along now. And then on the right, there's a property and the slope with the terraces that I built. So the new vegetable garden area. And this little stripe here is it doesn't really belong to anybody, you know? Nobody does anything, anything can just grow wild and random. And I feel before this happens, I just come in and do some nice things. At least those plants where I have too many or that I just don't wanna have in the garden anymore. So what I plan on doing is put the verbascum somewhere there, I think. There's a hazel where I put the wild meadow seed. So I think the verbascum would be very nice there. And then down here, there's my shadow, which is not ideal now, but here is a cotinus that I planted together with you last, last autumn. And I think the asters would be quite nice and it'd drift somewhere here eventually. 
You know, we're just down here by the slope and the interesting thing is we're just a couple of meters lower compared to the upper garden, but the wind is not as strong as it is up there. There's still a breeze going on because this is west facing and the wind comes from west now, but still I can sit here and I don't feel like, oh, the wind takes your air away, but let's plant a little bit because I think this will be a really nice area. A lot of sun, um, poor soil, sandy soil, exactly what Verbascom likes, so they are definitely a good plant if you happen to have an area with very poor soil in your garden let me just grab a good plant with a good example so I showed you that they have long tap roots and this is also important how you want to plant them because when you plant them you want to make sure that this long tap root really grows downwards into the ground you do not want to plant it with a root kind of just like facing upwards or bending or anything like this and what you use is this little tool here which is really ideal for any job like that this is also ideal for removing any kind of dandelions for example that are growing in your lawn so all i do is i come in in this area push it down into the ground and then just wiggle wiggle a little bit so i have a nice deep hole so now i can come in with a verbascum and just put it onto my tool almost, the root, so I can really guide it down into the planting hole to make sure that it really is straight down in there, which it is lovely. And then I can firm the plant in, so really push the soil in from all sides, and there it is, absolutely great. I think this would be so nice because these verbascums, they grow to a height of like, I think, a meter fifty in total, which is ideal, right? Alfie also think that this is going to be ideal because then you have these really lovely towering high stems of flowers here. And eventually when they're really happy here, they will start naturalize. And then I have patches of herbascum growing here at the base of the slope, like next year or at least in two, three years. Can't wait, obviously going to give you updates. So let me quickly plant these and then we continue with the asters. I wish I could tell you what aster variety this one is, but it's one of those unknown varieties that I bought really a couple of years ago. I would honestly say eight years ago, probably in the garden center here. And they just had aster. So I didn't even know what height they were. I just put them somewhere kind of thing like, okay, let's see. They would grow up to like 30 centimeters, pretty much like here, I would say. I think this is quite nice. So what I intend on doing is put a drift somewhere here and maybe at the other side of the slope as well, a little drift. So even though this should be a little more free spirited and just like things should try and naturalize as much and as good as they can, I try and make sure that at least I have element of cohesion going on here. I just can't do different. So this aster grows different to aster astron, where I'm going to give you a closer look and more information in a moment. Um, it doesn't produce these long runners. So it really kind of like has the old stem here and then it just starts growing outwards bit by bit. So they are very easy to divide. They were also very easy to lift. And all you do, this is so simple with asters, uh, quickly loften up the soil a little bit here push it aside, make sure that the roots are facing down into the soil as good as you can, firm it in, and then I already put some mulch here last time when we planted the cotinus together, so I can just put the mulch back there, and I think that this would be really nice, because um, this is cotinus grace, which has dark red foliage, kind of burgundy color foliage, and in autumn the most glorious crimson color foliage there is, and I think the purple asters in combination with the dark foliage, this is a really lovely combination. So all I do is plant a lovely drift here, plant a lovely drift over there, enjoy the sun down here by the slope, and then I take you up with me into the upper garden, and we start planting some aster asteron in the new herbaceous border. I dotted the asters throughout different areas down by the slope, now in three different areas, and then I have a nice clump of herbascum there. So I'm excited to see what happens, but at the same time when I was planting the asters, I had the voice of a friend of mine in my head saying like, Daniel, what you're doing there, isn't that kind of like putting lipstick on a pig? Meaning, is that really gonna be worth it? And to be fair, I don't know, maybe, 
That was just a waste of time, but maybe it isn't because those asters, I had nowhere to put them. So they would have just gone straight onto the compost heap. And I, I think it's still better to put them somewhere into the ground and see. Maybe they thrive, maybe they do something good, then maybe they're gonna be visually very pleasing, they'll be good for wildlife. Whatever happens, I'm gonna keep you updated, but the next thing that is definitely gonna work is I'll take you with me back to the upper garden because there's still the aster astron waiting to go into the new herbaceous border. Back in the upper garden, and it feels like standing at the edge of a hurricane, but you know what? Let's do it. So this is the new herbaceous border. I've already spent a couple of hours in there together with you and there is a use here pretty much in the center of the border. To the right there is a pear tree and just at the base of the pear tree there is already a nice big drift of Asta Asran that I planted there last year. And if I swing to the left there is a new perennial border so flanking the front there is the same variety of asters. And I want to put another drift back there so I have a wonderful element of cohesion going on here. There is a drift of sedum that we just planted together and I can I already tell you I need to start transplanting at least two of them because the one the two that are actually growing here on the left corner they need to go further there because I need a little more space on this side here so that I can have a wonderful drift of Asta Asran here and then another meter and a half of red amaranth at one point later on the year. What I need to do as well is transplant two miscanthus so I planted these last autumn with you and they come back to life. I think you can tell that there's a little fresh green shoot already. This is a wonderful variety. I think this was Droning Ingrid, if I'm not wrong, but they have an absolute amazing red color in autumn. So I think that they'd be a wonderful combination together with the asters. So the asters will go here in front and then the miscanthus will be just transplanted somewhere back there, basically, so they can make a wonderful blob there. What I'm going to do now first is quickly show you how I will plant the asters and then let's do some transplanting, planting and finish off this project. With all the wind up here, I already know when the moment of editing comes, I'm going to look at it and go like, whoa, you look crazy, but whatever. So it is, I'm still happy that I can get out here and do some planting with you. What I want to do is show you exactly at that runner that I showed you before how to treat it and how to plant it, because I think this is a fairly good example when you have any kind of aster that builds these really long runners. So what I do is I will come in with my secretaries at one point now and make shorter uh, pieces out of it, because there are very long sections here where nothing happens and then you have sections I'm going to give you a closer look where I can see first eyes appearing so I know that shoots are on their way and then can make a decision of what to do but I don't want to put this entire long string and I kind of want to make it a little more compact and have smaller pieces that I can put here into the ground. First thing I do is I'll just take a closer look at this and see where I want to cut it so obviously this here is the old part you can still see the old stem where I cut it back this year and this is all the new shoots appearing so this is a very strong part of the plant and then I have this kind of very very long runner here first thing I'm going to do is separate it so I'm going to come in with my secateurs and just snip it off so that I'm left with this section here what I can do is I can plant it like this and I will but I will kind of like start to just twist them when I plant them a little bit going to show you in a moment but what you can tell as well that on these stems here there are a lot and a lot of buds, so a lot of new stems are going to appear. So if I twist it around when I plant it like this, even on this part which is kind of like bent now, there will be new branches even this year and potentially flowers. Then I'm also going to look at this part here, because obviously at the last bit there is a lot of new nice growth. So I'm going to keep that. Then I have this shoot here, which is a little stringy, I'm not sure. There is another eye here. So if I cut, I think what I will do is basically just cut here. So there it is, I have roots, I have a nice strong shoot. So again, I can kind of like twist it a little bit into a round shape. And this is so much easier to plant them. But I'm gonna show you now how to plant it properly. Planting anything in the new herbaceous border is really lovely because you know that we've prepared the soil, everything is mulched. I don't really need to amend anything anymore because we already did it. What I do now quickly remove the mulch and then underneath there should be already lovely lofty soil. Yes, yeah, so I just need to come in quickly with my shovel to lofton it up a little bit again. And then this is a shoe that I want to plant. All I do is I'll bring it into a little bit of a round shape like this and make sure that this runner basically is not buried kind of like this you do not want to put it like vertical into the ground you want to keep it horizontal as it grew where you took it just lighten up the roots a little bit dig so that the roots are kind of like growing into the ground okay i hope you can still see something even though my hand was now in the frame and kind of like this firm it in a little bit 
and this is all there is to it. What I'm going to do now, just push the mulch back. And even if I bury it a little bit, that doesn't do anything because they grow quite fast now. What I need to do though is still water them and because they sat in the wheelbarrow for quite a while now. And some of the leaves are looking a little sad already, so I think some water would be definitely beneficial for them. If it wasn't for this wind, honestly this would be the most glorious spring day there is, but with the wind it's so cold, can't wait to go inside again, but I'm happy that we managed it. Even though you can't really see a lot, because last time when we planted the sedums, I mean there's like instant drama and impact, you can tell. With the asters it's a little different, you can just see these tiny green stems here and then everywhere in the border. But in a month from now you're definitely going to see how much they grow and how beautiful it is so i think in total it is a drift of like a meter and a half in length and maybe a meter in depth so there will be quite a nice impact and especially since there are two big drifts of the same aster in this border here I'm in the front garden with you now because wind travels from west today which means that there is just no wind here because the house protects this area and in the morning I even checked here like is there anything I can do is there any project I can do because it's nice and there's no wind but you know what there is a project but I don't have the plants for it so I couldn't do it so the asters it had to be the asters and to be fair it was a perfect time to do it because if you have any kind of perennials that you want to transplant lift divide whatever now's the time of the year to do it because they just come back to life but they're not grown to such a height also they're not so big yet that they would take any harm or suffer from it so if you want to do it do it now all I can say now is thank you so much for watching today's video and obviously I would love to welcome you in my garden very soon again take care guys bye